<laughs> hey guys, thank you. Yep, so like James said, uh, this is not about a technology that we normally use. Um, and I, and as a disclaimer, I uh, do not claim to be an expert in Angular either. Um, I've recently um, been getting into it and I really love to explore new technologies. Um, and kind of one of the, the big thoughts behind that is I really think that when you explore a new technology, it really illuminates a lot of uh, kind of the paradigms around the actual technology we currently use. So going through this, um, we'll just compare and contrast with stuff we normally do, which will help us even understand our own stack better. Um, so Artem took you through a really great introduction to kind of how JavaScript works and good JavaScript patterns. Um, we're going to take some of that, and I'm going to show you why some of the stuff he did is just horrible to do as a developer, um, and why Angular really helps with that. Um, so just to get started, so basically, what is AngularJS? So, uh, so I guess, uh, especially for the interns, you're familiar with Model View Controller now. Um, it's kind of new. Can someone quickly just explain to me you know, what MVC is? Brandon? Model View Controller. <laughs> Great. And what does that uh, mean in terms of how we pass around data in a web application? Anyone else feel free to jump in. Only can only pick on my intern. Liang? So like the controller it's that a model Yep, exactly. Exactly. It's basically just separating presentation logic from the actual, you know, the actual database logic and models. Um, and so what we use um, is Zen framework where uh, half of this all happens on the server. So we have models that, that you know, run SQL to get data, um, and then all the views are dependent on the controllers, which is also code running on the server. Angular is uh, what we call a client-side MVC. And what's cool about it is that we can actually completely separate the, um, the data layer and the client layer, and this allows us to take a huge load off the actual server and do a lot of the data manipulation processing on the client side. Um, so essentially, it allows you to, uh, to have uh, factories and controllers all on the front end, all with JavaScript, all running on the client. Second thing it does is Angular is a, uh, it, its goal is to extend HTML, um, and it basically uh, does this uh, to present dynamic content. So is anyone familiar with the phrase um, unobtrusive JavaScript? Show of hands if anyone has heard of that. So basically, uh, any, sorry, yes, uh, other offices too. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera. So basically, um, like if you, let, let's imagine you want to set up an event handler on some sort of um, HTML element in JavaScript. Um, anyone want to say how you would do that? Just the kind of general practice way to do it? Yeah, Brandon? In jQuery, I just grab the element by its class or ID, and then I find a listener to it using jQuery. Exactly, exactly. So this is basically what's known as DOM manipulation. You're able to bind event listeners to actual HTML attributes, and then from that we can, we can do stuff with it with JavaScript. Um, Angular does this really awesome thing called two-way data binding, um, and this basically allows the automatic synchronization of our models and our views. So in the event binding example where we have to actually you know, put an event handler, find the element in the DOM, something happens on the view, then we now have something back, and then we have to, if we want to show that again in the actual view, then we have to, you know, again, grab an element in the DOM um, and, and replace the information. So Angular completely replaces this, uh, which is awesome. So basically, that's what happens with the automatic synchronization of the data. Something happens on the back end, automatically reflects on the front end. Something happens on the front end, automatically reflected in the back end, which is awesome. So basically, a lot of times, people coming into Angular, they'll say, like, oh, yeah, can I use jQuery with it? Well, Angular actually makes it so there's no need for jQuery at all. So, you know, we, we talk sometimes about like, oh, we shouldn't use prototype, we should use jQuery, we should even just not even use, even now jQuery is a little passe, because it's not even necessary to do this kind of man manual DOM manipulation. Um, and basically, just a, a side note, the reason for this is because, you know, HTML is, is very static, and that's always the purpose of it, but now we're building single page applications, we're, paying, we're building dynamic um, applications um, and interactive ones, and so this is what, this is the type of technology that helps us do that. So, um, so I talked a little bit already about why a client-side MVC. Basically, we're decoupling the server side and the client side. We're taking a huge load off the server to be able to do all of our processing on the client. 
Um, and we, uh, so uh, views are no longer dependent on controllers that are, that are being rendered on the server. Um, and yeah, oh, and also, of course, you can um, allow for development in parallel. So you can have two separate code bases where someone's building basically um, a RESTful API layer and you're building the entire front end. That's, that's, a, that's an MVC framework. Um, so why AngularJS? Like I mentioned, uh, decoupled DOM manipulation from application logic. Basically, you never have to worry about manipulating the DOM again. Um, things automatically update on both, on both the, the model side and the client side. And it lets us build dynamic single page applications. So for Angular JavaScript, we're going to go through a few concepts just for the basics. Um, so uh, raise your hand if you've ever heard of these concepts. So uh, dependency injection. Great. This is why we're going over it. Uh, dollar sign scope as it's used. And yes, you've heard of dollar sign scope. Awesome. Do um, you want to say something about it? or? Okay, you've done a little bit Angular? Oh, great. So it would be like, uh, Angular would how would it be like in the control? So yep. Would be like that there would be like a controller that uh, we would like have, uh, like, I don't know what you call it, you put this double Angular brackets around yep, yep. it. So those variables like uh, could be attached, like those values could be attached to the scope and we could modify them and there could be functions yep. for the scope which probably on click or something could be called. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Basically, it's leveraging kind of the core stuff in JavaScript where um, window is your global uh, context. Um, and Artem was touching on different namespacing, and that basically allows you to have uh, a specific context um, for functions so that there aren't conflicts. And so scope is what allows us to, it basically in Angular, it's a global um, kind of object that allows us to attach things to it and, and use it in the view. Um, Two-way data binding, um, I touched on a little bit, we'll go into a little bit more details of it. Um, and, then, and then just in general, how Angular uses routes, controllers, factories, and templates, um, being able to put them all together to basically render our applications. Uh, so, okay, so dependency injection. Basically, um, if you can think in the classic object-oriented sense, so say you have a class um, and it has dependencies. Um, someone wanna tell me how that works right now? Like how would you, uh, give it uh, data that it needed if it had some sort of dependency? So think of just kind of normal object-oriented programming. Um, say you, you have a class, but it needs some functionality from a different class. How, do, how would you get that functionality into that class? Hirsch, you have one? So it's, it's not a trick question, yeah? Yeah, exactly, so inheritance, um, exactly, subclass, superclasses. Um, so you kind of build these, these big data structures. What uh, dependency injection allows you to do is build these small modules and only use them when you need them. So essentially you can have a function and you can basically inject the, the, uh, the actual module into it and say, um, this is what I want to use. And so Angular uses this a lot and we'll, we'll go through and show exact examples of it. Um, but basically it's great for refactoring because um, not all of the modules have to be aware of each other. Um, and you can, you can write different ones, developers can you know, develop them um, at the same time. So, uh, so the concept is uh, modules to be loosely coupled um, instead of strict inheritance of them. Um, and like I said, injection passing of dependency to a dependent object. And then two-way data binding, basically um, templates, all your HTML templates are rendered based on data binded in, um, in Angular through scope, like Hirsch was saying. Um, so basically, uh, scope is the execution context for all your expressions, and you're able to uh, reflect any changes in the models and the views, and any changes in the views and the models automatically, synchronously, magically. Um, and again, we don't need to manipulate the DOM. Can't emphasize it enough, because it's awesome. So uh, this is the last slide before we start jumping into some code. Um, basically. This is talking about uh, routes, controllers, factories, templates. So the way Angular is set up, there's multiple ways to do this, um, but Angular can completely take over the routing in your application. So this is basically the concept of a single page application. If you've ever seen um, in a URL uh, slash hash slash uh, URL, those are for single page applications. Those are ones where they're not hitting the server to call that uh, location. There, it's all being handled client side. And so that's what um, Angular lets you do. 
Um, and so if we just look at this uh, small code snippet right here, essentially what we're doing is, uh, first, this is an example of dependency injection. Uh, there are things called providers, which I'm not gonna really get into, um, but basically they allow, they, they're, they're different modules that have to do with routing and having to do with the location. And so basically we're saying when the, the route is, you know, slash home, use this controller and use this template. So we can define our templates in separate files. It's another reason why I really like Angular opposed to say Backbone.js, which uses underscores to like load HTML from, um, from the DOM, which, which I hate. Um, and then Artem's templating stuff, same thing, where you have to actually, you know, the inner HTML of, of this template, absolutely hate it. Um, I think it's way more, um, this is an opinionated talk, by the way. I should <laughs> make that disclaimer. Um, and uh, just structure your files in different, in different folders. Um, and so, yeah, defines controller template to be loaded for a given route. So that is basically what I wanted to do in terms of the general concepts of Angular before we start diving into actually some code and demoing it. Anyone have any questions so far before we get to code? Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, so that last code snippet, you, no, sorry. So that last uh, code snippet that you just showed, that's basically like Ajax's, uh, that's like AngularJS's Ajax in a sense, right? Uh, you're just like routing all of the different pages and then it gets the server and goes to the controller and gets the content only for that specific like section that you need. So, sort of. Um, so basically you're right in that it's saying that's the controller you use. So imagine um, Empire right now, right? If we have slash tickets slash Yankees, it goes to the tickets controller and then renders the Yankees view. So this is basically telling Angular that uh, when, when we have that um, path, and often you know it'll be buttons because it's a single page application, then we'll load this controller. With that controller, there will be a factory, which we use for a, a dependency injection. That factory, in the exact same way traditional MVC works, will handle all of the actual um, getting the data from the server. So Angular has a, uh, an HTTP method that, that will actually get your, um, hit your API endpoint and take that data. And so then that'll be in your factory and then uh, that your factory you can call it in your controller and do it with whatever you want. Um, but it's, it's different than the concept of just Ajax because everything's asynchronous in Angular. So really it's, it's almost closer to just doing a, a curl request or an HTTP request to, uh, to an API endpoint. Any other questions? Great, let's jump into some code. Um, oh, oh, jump the gun on that one. All right, cool. So basically, uh, what I first wanna do is I wanna just demonstrate how we would do something kind of the traditional way, and then we'll rewrite it with Angular to kind of show you how um, awesome it is. So basically, my intent of this is we have just a form input, I want to be able to type in the input, and as I'm typing, I want it to be appearing in real time on the page. Um, I've done, um, you could imagine something like this happening where, you know, if you have a credit card form and you have a, you know, an image of a credit card and you want the information to appear on the side as you're, as you're filling out information on the site. So something like this. So, um, so to start, uh, so we have our HTML here. We can ignore that for now. Just go into um, our JavaScript. And so like uh, Artem was saying, we're going to set up a, a namespace. So window.nextjump or an empty object. Um, and then we're going to uh, make our own um, self-executing um, encapsulate function for this. So let's say this is our first Friday's function or class, if you will. Um, no such thing as classes in JavaScript, but we basically uh, imitate them through functions. So here we go, we've got uh, a function um, uh, namespace, um, and so now we want uh, to be able to, when we type something in the box, we want to be able to show it. So, um, like Brennan was saying earlier, what do we have to do to it? Event listener, yes, Hirsch, thank you. So, um, well even before that I guess I should say, we have to, like you were saying, grab the DOM, actually link it, so um, let's just look at what I called it. Message input, it looks like. Um, so, uh, using prototype, but we could easily just do this with vanilla JavaScript. Um, so we grab it, um, we want to register an event listener, um, observe uh, uh, key up, right? Um, and then we give it a callback function to do something um, when we're done. 
Um, anyone know how we get the value from this once we have the event listener on it? Yeah. Michael? It's either .txt or .html. Say it louder. It's either .txt or .html. And I well, yeah, but um, how do I get the actual um, element itself? Oh, like the inside? Yeah, the, like, yeah, exactly. Like, so I, so we have this, right? I have, I, I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to get, you know, I, I bind it to the input, and now I want to be able to. Say it again. I, so that's correct, but what dot inner HTML? E. So E is actually the event. So, so E is going to give us such close. E is going to give us the the keys, right? So that's the actual event. Artem. There we go. Keyword this, which I think you left out of your presentation. Yeah, There we go. So, <laughs> so this is actually um, a uh, input. So we can do this dot value. Um, so say you know we have we're gonna we're gonna define this kind of global message up here, um, and we're gonna we're gonna say message equals this dot value. Um, and then, so then now we want to show it, and you were talking about inner HTML, which is exactly right. So we want to grab the DOM, um, and we want to see what it's called. It was called output. Um, let's read all that. Output dot inner HTML. So if I run this, it should work. And it's embarrassing because it's not We're working. Not setting the inner HTML. Okay. Set oh, <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> Message, cool. There we go. So, so basically, um, so what we had to do is we had our HTML. We had to bind an event listener to it. We then had to uh, grab the query the DOM again to find out where we wanted to put the output um, to put it in there. Yes. Um, could you do something very similar to see like? Because this is kind of inefficient. Let's say you have a really long like text because it just takes the entire text and replaces it, right? Like, could you see what key that the user pressed and then take that key, like and then put it like at the end? Um, so let's say this is like you know your input is like several paragraphs long. Or yep. Right? And every time you type something else, it reads the entire thing inside your input. So well, yeah, you, well you can also get like e which key. You can you can check how many keystrokes they've done. So you could say like, don't I, I don't want this until the you've given me you this need, many this many like characters of code, something like that. Uh, or... you, Michael, did you have something that you wanted to? Oh, no, I was just telling him yeah. that his thing also requires another event listener as well. So it's like these trade offs. Yeah, deleting sad. stuff, deleting stuff, deleting yeah. stuff is why you yeah. need to keep yeah. pressed. Yeah. Cool. So. So we've got that. We've seen how we're we're using the DOM, um, and 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 it's kind of a pain. You can imagine, like, what if we we what if we get something from here? We have error messages. We have to we have to again query the DOM, add stuff to it. We basically have to write everything twice. We already have a data structure here of this message that we're keeping in our JavaScript, but then we have to take the second step of actually updating our DOM with that message, and it's a huge pain. So what we're going to do instead is delete all of this and write it in Angular. So um, so Angular uh, similar. Um, we'll show I'll show you the syntax. It's going to be equal. It's going to be similar to exactly what we're doing with namespacing. So um, they're called modules. Um, so we just say like Angular module. We'll call it First Fridays. Um, uh, this this uh, this empty array um, you can you can pass in different um, type of other other things like uh, route providers and stuff in there um, that from some kind of additional Angular libraries. But for right now, we don't need any of that. Um, and then uh, then we should be able to just do app dot run function. Uh, let's say we'll alert that it's running when it's done, um, and then. The, so then the thing that's uh, a little bit unique, like I was saying how it's extending HTML, it's really an extension of HTML, that's what Angular is. We, have, we go ahead and we declare that this is a uh, Angular app. So Angular has the attributes that are ng, dash, whatever we're using with. So we'll say ng, ng app, and we called it, uh, we registered first Friday's app, and now you can see that Angular is running. So we now have Angular running, which is awesome. Um, so we'll get rid of 
that alert because we no longer need it. Cool. And so, um, cool. Can anyone guess what we probably do next? Controller, exactly. Hirsch, who has used Angular before, so slightly cheating, but that's okay. So we define a controller um, for our module, um, and then we just give it a, a callback function again. Um, and then this is where uh, is going to be our first real example of dependency injection. We're going to uh, inject scope, which, like I said, is the, the global object that Angular is going to use to pass data between the models and the views. So we have scope there, um, and we want uh, a message. And so we just put this variable here, scope.message. Um, let's see, so we've got uh, this here. So right now we have this div ID container. What we can do is we can tell Angular that we want this HTML to correspond to this controller. So we define the controller here, um, and it equals the first Fridays. And then, um, uh, and then for the input, we defined an ng model. So basically, we're saying we're binding this, um, the two-way binding of saying we have this scope dot message on uh, on our in our controller, um, and then. On, in our actual HTML, we would like uh, that to be bound to it. So message, and then in here, this is where we're going to put our output um, in in Angular. Uh, you know, similar to you know PHP, you, you can have you know like um, uh, sideways question mark equals whatever um, variables. Uh, the the syntax is just the double curly braces. We can put message, um, and that's it. So where there's no querying of the DOM, there's, there's no actual grabbing elements and putting it. Basically, we update something on the back end, uh, or we shouldn't exactly call it the back end, but we, we, we update something um, from the controller, and it automatically re reflects in the view. We update something in the view, automatically reflects in the controller. So, we're, so when we're typing right here, um, so that's our ng model message, right? It's taking that scope.message and it's resetting it. So if we say, so this, and then uh, in the output, we're just printing what that scope.message is. So we're basically taking our normal JavaScript data structures um, and we're just two-way binding it to the HTML and mirroring all of it as it goes on. Um, let's see how much time I have. Oh, some. Um, so basically now let's uh, maybe in the last five minutes just show you, um, how about I, how about I run through run through a simple to-do application to show you the code? Sounds good. People interested in it? Good. Keeping you awake. Um, so, so this is our simple uh, to-do application that um, that I created using Angular. Things I have to do on my list are teach this first Friday session, which is not quite done yet, and I also have to release Legoland to NextJump on Tuesday, which Rebecca will make sure that I do. Um, so what needs? So let's let's go ahead and give a test. So let's say prepare first Fridays. So this is just working like a like a delay, uh, working like a um, like Artem's to do list. Um, there we go. And so first Fridays. So this has already been done, so I can check it off. Um, and once it's checked off, it can't be unchecked off. Um, so. So basically, we can go and look at how the code is. So with Artem's to-do list, what he was doing is he was taking, he was putting event listeners on this, um, grabbing the value from the HTML, and then he was appending to the DOM. So in the beginning of his templating stuff, you saw this horrible stuff with strings of HTML, and then he slowly got better with you know what he had at his disposal for the for these archaic technologies that we use, um, but. Uh, so finally, he's, into, he's able to do some templating, um, but we're, we're still attaching event listeners. We're still passing them around. So if we uh, go to uh, this actual code, I'll just take you through. So, um, so here's our HTML, um, and I'll just point out a couple things. This is our template uh, that is defined by our, um, basically our home route um, and loaded there along with the controller of just our to-do controller. Um, you can see here that the, we'll introduce a couple new things. Um, first, what we had already done, we have a, a new to do dot task. So new to do is an object um, and it has a property task. So that's our model for our input. 
um, which, which is updating as we type. And then, and then we uh, define an NJ, ng click on the actual submit button. So when I first started looking at Angular, this kind of troubled me because I was like, what about unobtrusive JavaScript? What about separating our you know, event handlers in, in JavaScript that are HTML? So Angular really is a completely different paradigm. Like I'm saying, it's meant to be an extension of HTML. So we actually, this is how we attach any sort of events that we need to, but there's a lot less, you know, there's, there's different types of event binding now. You, we're not putting an event listener on this, we're just, we're just saying when we click on this, um, then we'll actually add the to-do. And then just taking a quick look at this code right here, um, Angular lets you do these things that are essentially for loops called ng repeats. So we have our, in our scope, we have a to-do array of objects. Um, and so basically, like a for each loop, we're, we're able to say for, you know, to do in our to do's array, um, and then it will just print all these out. So um, I'll show you the Angular code now, but basically, when this thing first happened, it mirrored, uh, it kind of faked a, um, a factory call to get data from a server. So when we first go to it, uh, you can see that there's already some data. So this pulls, uh, so, Right here, app.factory, we, we set our own factory, and you'll see that this looks really similar to the type of, art, type of stuff Artem did. Um, we can still um, return uh, an object of, of all, with all the different functions that we want. And so we have a get to do's, and, and we just have an array here. Um, like I said, a, a to do is an object with a task and also a, a checked attribute. So then, um, you saw before here just the running and how we sync up the controller and the template. So all we have to do is in the controller, um, we take, uh, we add our scope to do. So this is going to be an array of all the to dos that we have, and we're, we can use the factory um, to get the to dos. This is through dependency injection again. We're able to inject the factory into the controller. If uh, you might notice that this means you can you can inject multiple factories into one controller. So depending on your needs, you know these things don't have to be aware of each other. Say we had an authentication controller or or you know complete to do con or sorry factory complete new factory. We can use multiple of them um, all within this controller, which which can be pretty useful. So we we have our um, we have our global array. Um, we have this concept of a new to do, uh, which is just an empty one, right? And so then when we add, all we have to do is we, we assign um, this new to-do. So this was updated just through the HTML, through the data binding. So change the data on the view, pass to the model. This variable has now been updated. Um, and then we just push it to the end of our array. So you know, we have this global array we're keeping track of in JavaScript, the type of thing we already do normally in JavaScript to keep track of it. But now we don't have to go back and update the DOM each time. And then. Um, and then what's kind of cool about the, the complete to do, you know, so, so when, when we check it, right, we click on a row to actually complete it. Um, normally what you'd have to do is you'd have, you'd have an event listener there, you'd, you'd have to update on your data side, then you would have to update the actual input checkbox on the HTML side. It's all super messy. Here, all we have to do is pass the, the current to do right here, this ng model to do dot check. So it, it changes the value based on whether it's checked or not. False or true starts out false. Um, we have we have a complete to do uh, click method on the row right here. Um, we pass in the current to do just like a for each loop. So we have each individual object, um, and then we just change it to do dot checked equals true, and then our our view automatically changes, our model automatically changes, and everything stays in sync. So that's basically uh, what I had uh, for for just sort of a. Intro to Angular. Um, my intention isn't necessarily for us to all ditch our current uh, code base and, and switch to Angular, um, but more to you can kind of see how our own um, our own uh, code base uh, how it kind of works compared to this. So we're you know we're we're building these service layers, uh, but we still have uh, an MVC that's still all server side where we have a model that calls a service and then that has to be passed to a controller that depends on a view and all those things still happen on the server where we could take the entire load off the server and put it on the client. Um, so so far I've really loved getting into Angular and I would love to take any questions if anyone has any.